Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm just doing some. I'm just doing my readings right now. Um, I'm actually a little bit ahead of schedule, so um, tomorrow's looking good. I didn't really come online to talk about anything in particular. I've just been watching some Ti amalgamation. You know those TikTok videos that are like an amalgamation of TikTok videos. I watched a particularly heavy one about sexual abuse, which is um. It really made me think about my relationships with other women. And I'm not talking about sexual relationships. I'm talking about like how I literally related to other women. Now, on my on my YouTube, I literally talk about wounds that I've suffered that go like literally decades backwards and I'm still, you know, there are times where I wasn't a good ally to other girls, like, you know, who were who I knew were being abused, but I didn't step in to help them. And then there are other women who basically abused me and slut shamed me to impress guys that were abusing me at the time and, you know, that were abusing other women that they were close to. But you know, I was basically seething over wounds that had been happening for decades. So I, you know, the thing about me is that what I do with my TI videos is that I don't always talk about instances that are current. What I'll do is I'll intermingle them with stuff from my past because at the time it seems relevant or honestly, it's just an excuse for me to dump my other wounds in with what I'm going through right now. And there are several videos like that. But the truth of the matter is, is that realizing, like really letting it sink in how high the sexual abuse statistics are with women. And then thinking about my own life. I, I can't think of a single woman that I have met that have at least not been sexually harassed by a man. Not one woman. I can't think of a single woman that hasn't been sexually harassed or sexually abused in some way. I can't think of a single one. And knowing that, it really puts into perspective my relationships with other women. And we weren't, I, I you know, I want to say that we were competing for male attention, but we weren't competing for male attention. Us being toxic to one another and abusing one another, it wasn't seeking validation. It was survival. Because when you are in a situation where, you know, I talked about the transference of anger today, right? So it's a combination of a transference of anger and just not knowing how to function outside the framework of a re abusive relationship with men so when you're coming into contact with other females and they do things that do not meet the standards of the abusive men that are in your life you act from a place of being incredibly wounded and when you do that you do desperate things you do awful things to to one another and you do engage in abusive slut shaming or you know, conversely, like I've, I've, I've seen other people like actually shame people who are virgins, shame people who, you know, th there are two types of um, reactions to sexual abuse, right? The first one is uh, hypersexuality and the second one is sexual aversion. Now, sexual aversion gets shamed less than hypersexuality, but it still gets shamed. So we've got... You know, the when I was growing up, the culture that when I was growing up, there was a lot of slut shaming, but there was also a lot of hypersexuality right along with it. And then with those who were sexually averse, even though they weren't they weren't slut shamed, they usually found themselves abused in other ways because they thought as long as nobody saw me as promiscuous and as long as I felt like I was pure, then, then it didn't matter whether I was getting abused or not. And 
like it, it doesn't change like what I've done to other people or what other people have done to me it doesn't change what any of us have done to one another but it just made me realize how my own bitterness had prevent had prevented me from seeing exactly how much society had impacted women and especially the women around me when you are a class of people that have literally not gone through one stage in your life without being sexually abused or without being, you know, without being sexually abused. It's usually sexual women, right? When you've gone throughout your entire life, never knowing what it's like to not be harassed or assaulted or shit like that, it will fuck you up. It will fuck you up. And it, you know, it won't necessarily come out in the most obvious ways either. I think what I'm really trying to say is, if there are any women out there who I have called out that, you know, that made mistake, that made mistakes like towards me years ago that don't really fucking matter anymore. If there is anybody that I have done that to, I apologize, man. You are on your, you've been on your healing journeys. I've been on my healing journeys for decades. And if I, out of my bitterness, came at you and brought up some stuff that you did, or in my guilt, I have ever said anything or, or you know, called you out by name or talked to, talk to your business out online, like, you know, in a bit to assage my own guilt, I'm very, very sorry. That's all I can say. And you know, this world fucked us all up. It fucked us all up. It really, really did. And knowing that now, I'm sorry, like for all the women in my life that I've known then and now, I'm very, very sorry for not recognizing your pain and for not being a better friend to you and for not being a better ally to you. And for any women who have hurt me, you know, especially in relation to our relationships with men, for any women who have hurt me, I forgive you. I, I forgive you. It's fine. Like, you know, if you've abused me on behalf of a man or on behalf of, like, patriarchy as a whole, I forgive you. It's, it, I forgive you. I forgive you. We've, we've all done shit. We've all done shit and we've all been, we've all been through shit. We all have wounds that we carry around with us. So I'm sorry for any women who have suffered, you know, you know, I don't care if you're a friend of mine, if you're an enemy of mine, if you have suffered sexual abuse at any point, and if I have in any way added to that trauma through any emotional mistreatment of you, I apologize. I really do. I really, really do. Because this, this world is, uh, this world is, is fucking insane and abusive and cruel and not right. Now this, this ain't going to mean jack shit because hardly anybody, hardly anybody watches my videos. So the only way anybody might get this video is posthumously. And at this point, I don't even know if you're still thinking about me or if you are fine, if you're not fine, but I am sorry. This world is not easy on any of us. It's not easy on any of us. And I'm sorry for any woman having to go through that fucking shit. That, I mean, we see the statistics with harassment and with sexual assault and with sexual, like, uh, and people keep saying, oh, it's one in five, oh, it's one in six. I'm fucking sure it's higher. And I'm so sorry that it is. I'm sorry. I really am sorry for that. But, yeah, unfortunately, that's what I do when I'm, 
when I'm doing my compiling my readings unfortunately like I don't just listen to really fun videos I also uh, listen to a lot of heavy shit and you know that was on my mind so I had to speak In other news, so way more boring news. Uh, okay, we've got. I was pretty quiet. I was quiet pretty much all day. Um, the kids didn't say much. Um, after the video where I explained um how revenge doesn't really help anybody or make anybody happier because it fucking doesn't. I mean, it it just really doesn't. Doesn't matter if you get your revenge, you're still gonna be mad anyway. But um. I explained the transference of anger and how we usually transfer the abuse we've suffered um, to other people. And of course, like the neighbor upstairs is like, oh, we don't all do that. Like, yes, we do. I mean, if we don't do the transference of anger thing, then what the fuck was that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> it's like, if we are done all the do. <laughs> If we don't do the whole transference and anger thing, what the fuck is that? Like, come on now. Come the fuck on now. In fact, gang stalking as a whole is transference of anger in action. That's that's in fact, that's literally what the this whole global system is based on. It's based on a system of narcissistic abuse. Another TI used to call it a, nar a narcissist. That's exactly what this fucking is. It's like, that's what we do to each other. That's what people do to each other. Like what I was talking about with my relationship with women, I've been, I've been friends with a lot of toxic women. I've had toxic women in my family. Transference of anger. Right there. Because we'd all been abused by what? Men. Men are of a higher class than us. And absolutely all of us have been abused by men at some point. And usually in more damaging ways than we hurt one another. Usually. Not, I'm not saying all the time. Usually. All right. But that's transfer. That's a prime example of transference of anger right there. Like the way women treat each other and the, all the slut shaming and, you know, toxic friendships and shit mean girl shit right that's one example right of transference of anger and you know gang stalking as a whole is transference of anger like these perps are literally hired by people i'll give you listen i'll give you an example right one of my ti's one of my ti friends right they were in hospital Basically, I don't I don't want to say the exact circumstances, but they were basically interrogating somebody who was a perp. This guy had had three strokes and several heart attacks because he had been in close proximity with the electronic weaponry. OK, but he was a controller. So. What happened was, is that the controller told his story about how. He was enlisted to begin with. Now, he was already a hardened criminal, right? This controller was already a hardened criminal. So what happened was the controller was blackmailed into their role, okay? Said, if you don't do this for us, we're going to kill you. That's what I was told that actually happened, that the controller was blackmailed they said, if you don't do for the, this for us, you've got a long rap sheet. We can easily just kill you right now. Ain't nobody going to miss you. So, of course, the co controller chose to do it. And, you know, from there, the controller went on to... So, basically, the way it works is that you've got a controller and then you've got five main handlers for each area. And then for each handler, like, you've got, like... 13 to 15 main perps or something like that so it's like it's a hierarchy right so instead of taking their revenge on the people who literally threatened him with death unless he did this job instead of taking his revenge on them he transferred the anger he became a controller he became a part of the gang stalking system 
he became the boss of he became the boss of handlers the handlers in turn became the bosses of perps right so this is what exactly what i'm talking about when i say transference of anger is very real and what do the perps do to ti's they torture us either because they're blackmailed to do it or because you know or you know because they're blackmailed to do it or they give an incentive to do it something like that you know it depends on the perp but you can't turn around and say to me that we're not all like that when literally your entire presence in this apartment building has been a classic case of transference of anger classic because there is no way you're going to have a temper like that unless you've been badly abused in your life. There's no fucking way. You're going to be screaming at everybody every five minutes without some serious shit happening in your life. There's no way. There's no way you're going to be screaming at your kids. There's no way you're going to be screaming at me. And there's no way you're going to be doing what you're doing without the transference of anger, which is why I said everybody does it. Like, this is the thing. This is the thing. When gang stalkers make taunts, they don't think, you see. They don't think. I could give you another example. This person outside here right now was mocking me a few days ago after I was talking about how the gang stalking could, you know, could possibly contribute to World War Three because everything that's going on with me is about behavioral engineering. And they made some nonsense crack about how I talk all the time. OK, so maybe I should limit my words to hypocrisy. <laughs> maybe I should do what these people do upstairs and limit my words to speaking absolute nonsense. Maybe I should be like you and limit my words to saying shit that's absolutely not important or acting like I own the place. This is exactly what I'm saying. They don't think about their taunts. If transference of anger isn't real and not everybody does it, then what are you doing? What are you doing right now? What is it? Hell, what are your family doing right now? Um, by the way, can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? Because at the end of the day, as much as I'm bored talking about this shit, how are you going to try to silence your youngest from coming after me all the time and from calling me names? How are you going to tell them to shut the fuck up when you yourself will not only watch my videos, but will make directed taunts based on what I've posted? So what exactly are you trying to teach everyone? Are you trying to teach everyone not to be disrespectful? Or are you trying to teach everybody not to embarrass you? Because either way, obviously it ain't fucking helping you. Either way, it's not fucking helping you. Yeah. So this is exactly what I'm saying. So transference of anger is very real. Like everything that I've spoken about during this live is, is about transference of anger. All of us do it. My biggest problem was actually not the guilt from the transference of anger. It was from the anxiety because anxiety makes you feel guilty, makes you not guilty, but anxiety makes you feel ashamed about everything. Depression is where the guilt comes in. Anxiety just makes you feel like ashamed all the time. So that was always my biggest problem. It was never the transference of anger, even though I explained earlier that me doing the same thing that basically everyone else does, it makes me feel like kind of a coward. But, you know, it is very, very real and we all do it. It's not something, it's not a good thing to do, but we all do it. And the only way we can really nip it in the bud is to channel that anger towards a positive place. That's all we can do. Which is not this. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's all we can do. Listen. 
Is there anything else I'm going to say? Oh, yeah. I keep getting attacked in my eye, which is causing problems with my vision. But I've been looking at the left and right hemispheres of the brain. And the favorite place that they like to hit, and they especially like me to hit, hit me the back and run is here. This is where, unless I'm mistaken, this is where the cerebral cortex is, right? Hold on. No, the cerebellum. Tell a lie. It's the cerebellum. So they like to attack you right here. And the cerebellum is um, especially built for coordination. So, you know, depending on the direct where the directed energy weapons have hit you, they can affect your coordination right here. They can affect your higher mind, which is both frontal lobes right here. So that's part of the reason why I've been getting brain fog for the last few days. But because the directed energy weaponry is not... I mean, some of them aren't lethal, but some of them are. I mostly get hit with non-lethal weapons. So the reason I get hit with these weapons all the time is because they're non-lethal and you can easily heal from them after a few days. The body heals quite quickly after a few days, especially when you're young. So I've been getting, you know, as you know, I've got a scratch right here from where some of the weapons have hit. Because sometimes the directed energy weapons are lasers. I don't know if you can see that, but I can feel it here. Sometimes they'll hit you at certain parts of the body and it'll look like a smooth scratch. There are other weapons that hit you and they'll look like triangular dots on the body. There have been quite a few on my chest in the past. Um, they're all, they've got we you know that they've got weapons that kind of burn you all over. Like my hands looking a lot better than it did. Look at that. Um, they've got weapons that can burn all over the skin. Like and the way they do it, it's like um. How do I describe it? It's like there's a little pattern. It's like little little slits all over the hands. It looks like it's chapped hands, but it's not chapped hands. It's the weaponry. It's like a little pattern, but overall, it aggravates dermatitis in the skin. So, you know, there are multiple different ways in which the directed energy weapons can affect you. And... You know, and you can get radiation poison from poisoning from it as well. I've got all the familiar symptoms of kidney, you know, of radiation poisoning. I've got kidney shit wrong with me. I've got anemia, got high blood. I think I've got high blood pressure. I'm not sure. Um, I think the last time I went to actually get a medical examination, my blood pressure was kind of low. But um, so high blood pressure, anemia. Um, kidney dysfunction, kidney, st kidney dysfunction I've had since I was young. So you can tell how long I've been going through this fucking like radiation shit. And then I get hit in my eyes as well. There are times where I'll see like a flicker of light right here. It's not the same as when you're, you know, when you're going through organic, like eye loss, it's like you get a little bit of light right here and then your vision starts to glow blurry. And there's also a part of the brain that can affect your vision as well. They don't have to hit you in your eyes specifically. So let me see if I can find it. So I'm looking for the cerebral cortex right now. No, it's not the cerebral cortex I'm looking for. There's a part of the brain that controls your vision that can also be attacked by the directed energy weaponry. So if they want to attack your, your eyes, your, your period or what have you, you know, they can attack those body parts directly, but they don't always have to. Sometimes it's a matter of being able to control specific parts of the brain in order to cause blurry vision. And then on top of that, there's your nerve endings as well. There's there's nerve endings along your spinal column that can easily be hit. If you hit it in the wrong place, it can cause um, your body to kind of malfunction. There's one TI that I know that I've told you guys about before that had been hit in the back of her neck, like right here. And it caused her to hemorrhage from her womb. Like, and you know, it was always when she, that pressure was at the back of her neck that she'd usually hemorrhage from her womb, womb and you literally use a, lose a lot of blood, a lot, a lot. So yeah, these electronic weapons, 
they do an awful lot. But the thing is, the thing about it is, is because it's so frequent, because it's so frequent, because I get attacked so frequently throughout the day, and because I'm so used to being in pain all the time, or I'm so used to being hurt all the time, sometimes I forget that I'm in pain. So when I'm like tired or you know, when I'm tired, when I'm tired or when I'm fatigued or, or what have you, um, I'll feel guilty because I feel like I'm just being lazy. But then I'm thinking, Fabian, didn't you just get attacked during a night? In your head and in your eye and in your fucking womb, like, which is part of the reason you got fibros. Like, haven't you been attacked all over your body? So why wouldn't you be tired, especially if the torture is you know, usually worse at night when you're trying to sleep. So, I mean, fuck. I mean, why wouldn't I be tired? So sometimes I forget. Like, I legit forget because I'm so used to it. It has to be really, really bad for me to remember that the gang stalkers are there. And every so often, they like to shop me at just the wrong time just to remind, just to remind me that, remind me of their presence sometimes. But are they, are they doing that? No, they're not doing that. They're not doing that. So, yeah, this is the air. Yeah, so transference of anger, like, do not underestimate that shit. It is very real. And yes, everybody does it. Stupid taunt. It is, it is really, it is really stupid. Like, when you start to pick it apart, like, every time they make a taunt like that, I, you know, I don't get hurt as much, but I use it as an opportunity to educate people on what life is like for a TI and why a taunt like that is stupid. Like I use it as a teaching opportunity for everybody. So I take the insults leveled at me or the gaslighting level up, leveled at me. And then I use it as an opportunity to teach people about the psychological effects or you know why that insult is a stupid ass fallacy but yeah transference of anger is very very real we have a whole civilization that is built on it can't tell me that's not the case nobody can tell me that's not the case not with a straight face at least Um, let me, let me just feel, yeah, I gotta go now. <laughs> I gotta go now. I gotta get back to my readings, but I love you guys. My fellow TIs take care. Um, even for those who are not TIs who are just interested in like what a targeted individual is. Uh, thank you for being with me. Thank you for watching, you know, for the few that do. I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.